Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vicki Townsend. I am the founder of the Cafe D, and welcome to Divorce RX, where we bring experts from the divorce industry that touch on every aspect of that particular process to you each week with experts that will absolutely change your life, making this process for you faster, easier, less expensive, and saving you your sanity, because that's really what we're here and what we're all about. And I am so excited, because today I am bringing you one of my very favorite people, and she's not only an amazing woman, she's an amazing child development expert. And she's done, we've done webinars together. You can go and find them back in our uh, membership area. But today, we're going to be talking about divorce and your younger children and what the difference between the developmental stages that they're going through versus behavioral issues that you may be having, that you may be seeing, and how you can tackle them both so that you can raise happy children. So I hope that that sounds really good to you. Because what's really important to me is that we, our goal is to save you time, money, and your sanity, and to make you as whole as possible as you go through this process. So thank you so much for joining us. One thing that I do want to tell you about is today, after this is over, we have a very private and very special Facebook group. It's not the one that you see out there on Facebook. It's very private. It's where all of our experts go to answer your questions and answers after we do things like this. So Lena will be joining us in about a half an hour. We're going to go back to our Facebook group page. It's very private. And you can ask Lena any question that you'd like. And to do that, you just need to join our membership community. And it just starts at $7 a month so that you can have experts at your disposal. We'll have lawyers there. We will have uh, financial advisors there and tax accountants and, and wealth and, and financial advisors for you. We'll have people like Lena. We'll have marriage and family counselors and therapists. We'll have real estate agents there and mortgage companies there, insurance companies that, that will be there, all for you. So what you will need to do is you'll need to go onto our website at www.thecafed.com and join our membership area. It's really quick and it's quick and easy. You can do it. And today you'll be able to ask Lena any question that you'd like. So speaking of Lena, I want to introduce her to you right now. Lena Acosta Sandal. She began her, began her career at Vista Del Mar in Los Angeles. There she developed expertise in child and adolescent development and infant and early childhood mental health while strengthening her resolve to support families. She has trained and participated in research studies with Yale's Minding the Baby the National Child Traumatic Stress Network, and the Child Trauma Research Program in San Francisco. So I would like to welcome my dear friend and amazing childhood expert, Lena Sendal. Hi, Lena. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that you're here today because on our Facebook group, on private messages, on my emails, on my Twitter account, this is huge, which are child behavioral issues co-parenting issues, little ones, making sure that they're happy and healthy. And you are the, the woman to, to, to answer all of these questions. So what I want to do is I want to start this out right and say, what is the biggest mistake that parents make and what's the best advice you can give people when they're divorcing with young children? The number one, number one. Okay, little people show us how they feel rather than tell us how they feel. So sometimes in a divorce situation, parents feel as though their little person has changed. But actually what they're doing is that they're showing you how they're feeling. So it's not that they've changed, is that they cannot tell you with their words because they don't have emotional language yet. That's the responsibility of the, of the parent, right? To find out how they feel. So. Sometimes as parents, we get scared when we're co-parenting or in a divorce situation, especially if it's volatile, because we imagine that there's something terribly wrong with them. But what they're actually doing is showing you how they're feeling. So some of the behavior is more about how they're expressing their, their feelings. So we have to learn how to interpret the way they're behaving so that they can 
we can understand what they're saying. So when, as we as parents, we see um, tantrums, yes. what, how do we deal with them? What's the best way to, 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 to handle something like that? Well, with the, the tantrums, here's the statistic on tantrums for children in just a regular situation. Children between the ages of two and a half and four and a half have three major tantrums per hour. <laughs> what? Yes, and major and a, t a major tantrum is on the floor, screaming, hands moving, hitting themselves on the head, spitting, pushing, biting. That's a major tantrum, three per hour, and one minor conflict every three minutes. Normative. This is expected. Now, you know, different children, different ways, different flavors. Children, you know, do not develop linearly. It goes up and down, but that's what's expected. So when you add divorce to this developmental marker, right, it's kind of like extra frosting. <laughs> so maybe, you know, it's development with frosting. Um, and what, what you, to handle a tantrum in any situation, but in particular in, in when you're co-parenting, is first label what they're feeling. A lot of the time we tell them to stop, but they don't even know what they're stopping. They, they are in that moment feeling out of control. So we have to tell them how they're feeling. You're very, very sad because daddy just left you and you had a fun weekend with him and you miss him. Mm. And this is what's so hard to do in divorce because if we left this person, it's hard for us as human beings, not because we're bad parents or, you know, don't judge yourself. It's hard to speak kindly about your ex. But it's important for a little person to be able to miss both of you. Um, I'll give you an anecdote. I have a little someone who, this divorce is very, very volatile, but, you know, yesterday we were talking about the new Inside Out movie with him, and that's how I was talking to him about his feelings, and we were labeling his emotions, because using, the number one task in the early years is to help them have emotional language. They don't know to tell you I'm frustrated. So this little guy, I pulled out love, and, I, and we were trying to put the feelings with the feelings of the movie. There's five of them. And I said love, and he got very serious. Now I'm a therapist, and I know little people, so I said to him, love is hard for you. Because love for you means sadness. Because when you're with daddy, you miss mommy. And when you're with mommy, you miss daddy. But love also means joy. And that, in a nutshell, is the experience of a little tiny person. And they don't know yet that you can have more than one feeling at the same time. Ooh, I like that one. And Actually, I, there's adults that don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I happen to be married one. So. <laughs> oh, okay. I digress. <laughs> I, first of all, I love that you call them little people. Yes. I like that better than children or anything just because they are they're little people and they mm -hmm. have learned the, the language so the you mentioned the movie inside mm -hmm. out I haven't seen it yet I'm actually seeing it this weekend is that a movie that you would recommend to parents to help them understand how to teach their children how to label the emotional language uh, inside out is a movie for children four and a half and up uh, so if you do have children, and we're talking about the, the little ones today, but if you do have children between the ages of four and a half and up, um, it's an amazing movie because it gives you metaphor to speak about the emotional world, right? I, I, I will forever be grateful for Disney Pixar to, for giving me little tiny characters of, of the thing that I love the most, which is the emotional world. And now I'm able to speak to children about the emotional world because children like to speak in metaphor. You know, sometimes as parents, and especially in a divorce situation, we want to ask them directly, so how was it? Did you have fun? And they feel a little, you know, kind of frazzled, right? So maybe you know that they missed you. You can, you can talk about if you have a dog, you can go, oh, Boxer really missed you when you weren't here. How do you think Boxer, Boxer felt? And... I guarantee you that your little person will describe how Boxer felt, but they're actually talking about themselves. Oh. So this movie gives you an opportunity to speak in metaphor. In the movie, the protagonist, um, her family moves from Minnesota to San Francisco, and she has a very hard time with that transition. So for children in divorce, they're having a huge transition. 
Um, now, this is not something that a lot of um, family courts follow, but really anybody under the age of four should, the best practice in the early years is not to have overnight. Oh, so how do you, so if you are, um, a, 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 you're, you're a divorcing couple, right? There's two of you. Um, I want my child half the time and he wants his child half the time. How do you negotiate that part? Because I agree with you. I don't think that the courts um, mm -hmm. would agree with that. So it would take a real buy-in mm -hmm. on the the parent that doesn't have the little one. And what age are you talking to up to, Lena? In a perfect world, uh, nobody under four and a half would have overnights ever. Now there's ways around that so the parent doesn't lose their connection with their little person. Uh, so in a perfect world, um, one parent would consistently either pick up or drop off at school. Right, so the child, because children do, children under the age of five cannot tell time. And the way that they tell time is through their routine. So they know that they go to school, they go to the playground, they have circle time. And, you know, a parent can say, daddy's going to come get you after nap time and take you to karate. Right, so if we're doing equal time, it's not about the, I don't, I, a lot of times in my experience, parent gets stuck on the sleep. Um, but sleep is, is intense safety for young children. And they get very dysregulated when it doesn't happen the same and in the same space. You know, families in California, like the parents are actually moving rather than the child, which that's just crazy making. But I would say that in a perfect world, if you have a child under four and a half, it's about routine, prediction and consistency and note 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 everybody take <laughs> I'm so routine prediction consistency routine in a perfect world Sally always sleeps at mommy's house but Sally Sally's daddy picks her up in the morning and takes her to preschool every day hugs her kiss her and tells her, I love you. And then he goes home. Friday, he can pick her up after school, go play at the park, go for dinner. And then every other Saturday, right? Daddy can spend the entire day with Sally and then he takes her home to mommy for bedtime. And this happens until Sally is four and a half. Okay, so in a perfect world, that's what we would do. And, and and you know, mommy picks up Sally, or nanny picks up Sally, and then nanny know, then then Sally knows that that's her routine, and that routine is sacred, no matter what. Now, parents always ask me about vacation time because a lot of parents in the in the divorce decree get those two weeks in the summer. That's different. The little person can understand that they're on vacation. The little person can understand that they're going to the Bahamas. The little person can, you know, can understand that that this is a special time, but in the day to day, it's very disruptive to young children to be pulled out from the from the nighttime routine. It's just very disruptive, um, and sometimes and sometimes that happens. Like a little tiny preschooler goes to school, and then Wednesday they get picked up, and then they get dropped off again, and that's anxiety making for little people. So let's pretend that we can't do this. That we can't do my perfect visitation because it is perfect, um, and we're going to divide the little person into homes. Okay, please don't break it up. Please do, you know, consistent days in a row. Okay, so then the little person knows that I do four sleeps with daddy, right, and three sleeps with mommy, because that's how children can tell time when it's spread out. Every Every little person needs to have a little tiny calendar in their room with stickers, a, a sticker for daddy, a sticker for mommy. And that's what I, so that, so routine is the first part that I spoke about, right? And make sure that it's consistent. A small child has a very hard time seeing somebody in the middle of the week and spending a night in the middle of the week with someone. 
Family Court does that a lot. They do a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. they right? do. And every and every other weekends. I completely disagree with that for children under the age of five. So it's more about consistency, about multiple days together. Um, and then prediction is a calendar with stickers. These are the days that you see daddy. These are the days that you see mommy. And as best you can, because I know that life happens, and I don't ever like to set up parents for failure, you stick to it like gospel. You know, if, if a little person knows that daddy's coming on Friday, daddy better be there no matter what. Life happens sometimes. But we have to, and sometimes parents, like, are afraid to tell the little one, oh, daddy can't come today, and then they, like, pretend and take him to the mall or something. They feel it in their body. And then they can't. They can't feel safe with you because you've lied to them. And then they can't tell you they don't feel safe but they, because they themselves don't know that they can't feel safe. So little people tend to find control in all the wrong places in these situations, right? So we have to, and, and how, what do I mean by that? Um, they, they, like I said, they behave their emotion rather than feeling their emotion. Maybe they're missing daddy, but they're crying over shoes. Right. right. Let's pretend little one spent, and let's pretend that parents are following my direction and little one does Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and she comes back to mommy on Sunday morning, right? Sunday morning, little one falls apart over, um, the, over, you gave me bacon! It's not about the bacon. She's transitioning back from being with daddy. That happens in every single preschool in the city on Monday morning. Monday morning, all my teachers that I train are like, oh, Monday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, and they all transition. That is normal. Daddy didn't do anything to baby. It's just baby is kind of getting back into this other thing that they have to do. Right? So they will cry over bacon, but it's not about the bacon. Don't get stuck in the content. Pull back and speak to them about what they're feeling. You miss daddy. Daddy just left. But today we're going to go bleep, bleep, bleep. We're going to go to the park. We're going to see abuela. You know, whatever it is that you're going to do that day. But please always engage with them first in what they're feeling. And don't feel like you're putting words in their mouth because little people, when you get it wrong, they tell you no, and they <laughs> tell you what it is. <laughs> they always do. Another thing that I want to say, going back to your original question, um, little people tend to say, I hate you, mommy. I hate you, daddy. Right? And then they tell you that, you know, well, daddy doesn't do that. Of course, check in as best you can with your ex to see if there is a disparity, right? Because that's my other suggestion. So routine, prediction, consistency. Consistency is about both homes need to have the same routine, as much as possible. And you don't have to be rigid and get stuck on time, but if mommy does book, bath, bed, then daddy needs to do book, bath, bed. If mommy does come home, have snack, eat dinner, it, like what try, like whenever I see, when I have a co-parenting case, that's the first thing I do. I, look, I say, what's your routine? What's your routine when you're with your little one? And then I match it. And sometimes, you know, this parent is doing kind of something really, really nice. And, and then we put it together so that the little person has the same exact routine in both homes. Because that's how they feel safe. Because they can predict what's going to happen. Right? And that's sometimes hard to do. I was, that, that, that's my next question in all of this. Because um, I, I was... You know, lucky when, when I divorced and my, my kids, my son was six and my daughter was 10, so they were beyond the, the age that we're talking about now. But um, I would suggest that my ex would have told me he's doing it his way, in my way or the highway kind of thing. So what do you do and how can do you, is, is there some communications that, and, and some assistance that you can give to our listeners that don't necessarily have complete and total cooperation with their ex because that requires um, 
a lot of selfless behaviors and a lot of selfless thinking, right? They have to be, yes. and a lot of, and 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 a lot of, um, you know, of, of the the hurt and anger gone away. And that's not necessarily when you say it's a, a perfect world. That's not a perfect world for many of our people at the Cafe D. So. What would you do to suggest to them on how they can get to this? Because I can see how this life that you're talking to us about today would be a beautiful life for young children. And, I, and if anybody out, if the, those that are listening, if you all feel the same way, I would love to hear from you. So, so uh, let us know if that's something that would be important to you. Okay, so routine, prediction, consistency. Part of prediction is narration. So, I hate you, Mommy. Daddy doesn't make me have my milk. He gives me soda. Okay. Right? Happens. Right? Because sometimes, sometimes one of the homes becomes Disneyland and the other one is not. Right? Because somebody's setting the rules and somebody isn't. So, uh, in that moment, you can say, oh, I see. That's true. But Mommy has some rules and Daddy has some rules. And these are Mommy's rules. And don't go with the I hate you, Mommy. Because... In that moment, even if married couples, this happens to them, the little person, when they get frustrated, right, when they get out of their little pleasure bucket, because little people love to be in a pleasure bucket, right, they ask for the other caregiver. It's a way to problem solve. In a divorce situation, you're so hurt, you're so worried that you feel as though something that a child does normally is actually like they're actually going to hate me. They don't. Now, every child has the fantasy of, like, running away at some point in their life, right? And, and for divorced children, there's a little bit of, like, a reality to that. I can't run away to daddy's house and have soda for dinner every single time, right? But in that moment, you have to be the mommy that says, mommy's taking care of your body, mommy's taking care of your teeth, and we are going to have milk today. And I'm sorry that we can't have soda. And that's it. And drop it. And don't, because a lot of parents get into, well, daddy is not making a good choice, and blah, 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 blah. Keep your side of the street. You tend to your side of the street when you have that type of situation. And, and keep in mind that um, it's highly unlikely that your child will lose love for you. Okay? The number one injury of foster care children is that they don't want to be taken from their family because they love them even if they got burned by them with a cigarette like in my experience when I worked in the foster care system that's what I was dealing with the grief of losing their parent so think about it in the worst case scenario and that and having a hard time responding to this is the parents world and the parent not being afraid that they're gonna lose their little person's love and that's Highly, highly, highly unlikely. It's almost impossible. Wow, that's good to know. So, what do you think is um, the, so? So, the best way to deal with it, we've talked about if if your ex is not on board with you, the way your routine is, the you know the fact that you can get them in on a routine. Um, is there some sort of language that can be used? Because you're right, it. The, the sleepover is is a part of the co-parenting agreement, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know we we're, we're going to talk about the you know this in great detail as we move along, and what we're going to talk to you guys about something that's going to be really really special for you. That's, that's I can't wait to tell you about. But um, we're going to be able to help our Cafe D um, community with these types of problems, but if there was one way that you could get um, somebody on to be on the same page with you in the communication with your ex, not with your child, but with your ex, to understand that it's really, you're not being selfish, and I get that you think that I'm being selfish, because if I, if that was, if it was my ex, I would be thinking, he just wants to have the kids seven days a week, I'm not, I'm getting screwed here, right? That's what yeah. I would be thinking, right? Yeah. So is there some sort of study that we can talk to our ex about? Is there some, or, or is there some sort of way, you know, that, because it, uh, in my case, it would have been, when I, okay, well, then they stay with me. Right. right? Uh, there are multiple, multiple studies on the disruption 
of, of uh, a child's psyche, especially the tiny ones, like infants sometimes get taken back and forth. Um, what I can do is uh, make that available. So to answer your question, um, if you're in the beginning, if you're separating and you're not yet in the legal system, please, please include a routine in your decree. Ooh, okay. And um, I will be happy when we finish to, t to like copy and paste from someplace else like a nice little routine that every legal person and you include that in your decree so that then you have some legal standing if you're in the beginning. If you've moved on and you kind of you already have it and you're set up and your little person is spending some time with you and some time with daddy, um, development is, a, is, is, development is good for any parent. And I would say that, you know, fear is only trumped by fact checking. Mm. And a lot of parenting, when it comes to co-parenting and divorce, um, it, 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 a lot of decisions are made based on fear. And the fear is, again, the one that I just spoke about before. That's the elephant in the room. My baby's not going to love me anymore. My baby's not going to want to be with me. And again, that's highly unlikely. They're just problem solving because it gets so confusing for them, right? So I would say to you that each of you can share developmental information with one another. Great sources for development information is T. Barry Brazelton touch points. Best thing in town. <laughs> You know, you can go online, you can Google touch points, and it gives you everything for the under five. Under three, zero to three dot org. That's a place to get development information. So you read about the development, and then you help your child in that way. Or me, you can come to the nest in Miami. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, but, um, and, and then if you get in a situation where you just can't, um, I, you know, guardian ad litems are very good. Not all of them, um, but it, it's, a, it's a good resource when it comes to young children. And tell me who are, what are guardian ad litems for, for those of us on the call that don't know. A guardian ad litem is a person that um, gets uh, chosen by the, by the court to um, represent the child. And when there's a big disparity between the parents, they tend to take up all the information and make sure that um, the child's best interest comes first. Because sometimes it's very, very hard between the parents. And gar guardian ad litems are trained in, um, in child psychology, not a lot, but enough. Um, and they visit both homes, they visit the environment, and they, they always tend to kind of go into ritual. I have a, a, a favorite. His name is Barry Joblin. I love him. Favorite. <laughs> but he's in Miami, so not everybody is in Miami. But um, because this person will take into account these two homes. But this is in the worst case scenario, right, when you're really, really fighting. But it's important because they become the advocate for the child. The, so there's light in that. The shadow in it is that when you get a guardian ad litem, you, he, the, that person gives a recommendation to the court, and then the court, then it's between them and the court to figure out what's going to happen with your little person. Mm. You don't want to so, get to that point, so it's no. a ditch resort. Right, right. So first, first, we'll try to get it into your divorce decree, the routine, especially if you have children under five, right? Second, um, keep your side of the street clean. Make sure that you narrate to your little person, these are mommy's rules and those are daddy's rules, and that's okay. And we do, because children can hold different rules. Guess what? They hold rules from school. They hold rules from your home. And know that routine helps children feel safe. It helps us feel safe. All of us brush our teeth and shower and get dressed exactly the same. I want all of you to brush your teeth, like start brushing your teeth, not on the right side tomorrow and see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, right. I get it. I get it. <laughs> makes you feel off, right? Yeah, that's what that's what routine does for children. It makes them feel safe. So, so much sense. And a lot of mamas, and because it's usually the, it, you know, stereotypically I know, but a lot of mamas feel like they have to be the bad guy, and and know that the daily tasks of taking care of your little people 
of feeding them, of bathing them, you see it as a task. You see it as not special. Young children, little people experience that as love. Mm. So, you know, maybe daddy is taking them to Disneyland literally, you know, every weekend. And that's special. But children really experience you taking care of, care of them with those little tiny tasks as love. And we as adults, for, like, take that for granted. Right, right. I love it. Well, you know what? We are on the half an hour now, Lena. Yes. I want to remind our listeners that are here that we are about to go to our very private Facebook group page. And they're going to have a, we're going to spend a half an hour back there where if you want to join us back there, you can do it. You need, just need to be a part of our uh, Cafe D community. And that is just starts at $7 a month. So you will have access to people like Lena. She will be there on a regular basis. We have divorce attorneys back there. We have financial uh, management people back there, real estate agents. We have mortgage companies, insurance issues. You can have all of those things. You can have those people at your disposal. And they're all back on our private Facebook page. So what do you do? You go to www.thecafed.com and click join our members community. And we will meet you there in just a few minutes. This video will be available to you for the next week. If you'd like to watch it again, you're more than welcome to. We will be sending you a link. And we will also have it on our website. And we'll be tweeting about it. And we'll be Facebooking it. So um, you'll be able to grab and, and get this. Lena, you and I are going to do something really special. We're starting probably maybe this summer. I know. It's very exciting. <laughs> Guys, we are starting something really special here at the Cafe D, and this one is huge. Lena is going to be joining us in a support group setting online, and we're still going to we're still trying to figure out like the legal side of this because you all understand that there are HIPAA requirements and all of those types of things. When you do things online, it's a little bit different than if you were in a room like I'm in right now. Um, so we are going to have Lena available. We're going to do these things at least maybe once a month, and we're going to start out between now and the time we actually hit the start button, probably in September, we're going to do these for free for time, from time to time here in um, the Cafe D community. So what we want to do is we're going to start asking you on our Facebook page, we're going to start asking you for topics and questions that you need to have answered because we want to hear from you. We want to know what you're struggling with so that we have somebody like Lena here to answer those questions for you. So please join us. Please become a part of the community, and please, if you have friends that are struggling with this issue, which we all know that we all do when you've been divorced, you tend to have more friends that are divorced. So I'm going to ask you if you'll share this with them as well. And meanwhile, we are going to see you on the other side in our Facebook community in just about two minutes. And welcome to everybody that's joining us right now, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lena. We'll see you, we'll see you online. Yes, thank you, Vicki. Bye. Bye.